Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to do a longer lesson. We've been spending a lot of time building all of our assets in Blender. And today we're finally going to bring those all together into Unity. Uh, and we're going to make it so that it's lit using baked in lighting. And we're going to run around inside of our game. So let's get started. I've started a new Unity project here. And I'm going to get rid of all the lights in the scene. Uh, and the one thing you're actually going to notice is this area is actually still lit, even though we've got rid of all the lighting. Uh, so what we need to do here is make some changes to Unity's lighting system. So everything's going to be uh, uh, pitch black. That way you can do all your lighting inside the game without having any ambient light. So first, I'm going to go to the lighting tab up here. If you don't see the lighting tab, you'll have to enable it in window. But I'm going to go to lighting and I'm going to change the skybox to none none for the light and I'm going to change the environment lighting to color and I'm going to make that black. All right, go back to the scene and you're going to have nothing in the game now because we have no camera, but you can see it's darker here. We don't have any more horizon lines. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the uh, asset pack, the standard assets uh, with the first person player controller. Um, I went over this in class, but let's do a quick little review. So I'm going to click on the asset store here, up here at the top here. You have to have a Unity account, of course, to access the asset store. And I'm going to search it by, let's see, asset packs. Now we just want the standard asset pack here. And we're going to import this. It's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, so we're going to have to wait a little bit while it uh, decompresses and it installs all these assets. Inside the asset pack, you have a lot of uh, prefabricated things such as first and third, third person character controllers. You get cars, planes, a lot of particle effects, a bunch of lighting. It's actually quite a nice thing. I recommend playing around with some of these. So I'm just going to leave everything selected. I'm going to click import and this is going to take a little bit of time. Once this is done is we're going to create a couple new folders down in our assets over here. We're going to make a folder for our Blender files. We're going to make a folder uh, for our textures and we're going to make a folder um, for our uh, materials. And uh, we'll also make a folder for prefabs because we're going to make some prefabs today. So we're going to make a bunch of new folders once this is done importing. And then we're going to start populating with some of the work we've been doing in previous lessons. All right, so we're still uh, working this up here. Uh, you know, you don't need all of these assets, but I thought I might as well import all of them. It makes it a little bit easier because sometimes you can be unsure what to check and what not to check. Uh, there's a lot of good free assets on the Unity Asset Store, so feel free to kind of go around. You can sort it by free and see what's around. A lot of good 3D models, some good scripts, uh, and there's a lot of uh, fun things you can kind of play around with, a lot of particle effects. Um, so have a little look, see what's, uh, see what's offered, and, uh, you know, of course, I would still encourage you to uh, create most of your own assets inside of Blender and texture them yourselves with UV unwrapping. Um, but I'll kind of leave it up to you guys if you want to take a few things here and there. Okay, so we're still loading in a bunch of these assets. Well, that's loading. We'll just uh, keep waiting over here. We'll hold on as it's being suggested. You're welcome to fast forward this part in the video if you like, you know, or you can just keep watching the screen like I am. I'm going to stop, stop talking now. a lot of assets. I know I said stop talking, but I'll start talking again now. It's good. A little dry. Just hear my clock tick over there. Last couple assets. Oh, oh, is that the end? Oh, we're getting some Open Sans fonts there. That's always handy. A bunch of 3D models there, the FBX files. Uh, you can export your Blender files as FBXs, or you can uh, just keep them as .blend files. Unity works really well with Blender, uh, so it does read .blend files reasonably well. Um, it's very important that you're always UV unwrapping. A lot of you asked in class, why do we have to use UV unwrap? Uh, and that's so you can apply your textures a lot easier. Okay, we're all done. So I go back to my scene tab over here and you're going to see now we have a few more folders in here, but let's create a few new folders. We're going to create a folder here. We're going to call this blender files. We're going to create another folder here. We're going to call this textures. Let's create another folder here. We'll call this materials. And let's create another folder. I'm going to call this prefabs. Okay, so I'm going to go to my Blender Files folder here, and I'm going to import a new asset. Okay, 
and let's see uh, 3D models. And I'm going to bring in my corridor 01, my crate, my intersection, my light cube, and my transfer corridor. Let's bring all of those in. Okay, and now let's go back to assets and let's go to textures now. And let's bring in the textures for those. So let's go to my 3D game, textures, and here's all the textures I use. Let's import them into there. Okay, so let's drag our first person player controller into our scene now. Do, do, do. Standard assets, uh, characters, first person, prefabs, FPS controller there. So let's just kind of drag that into our hierarchy. Make sure our position's at zero, zero, zero. And um, if I click on game, you're gonna notice it's blue. It's no longer black. And that's because attached to our first person character controller is a camera, and that camera is creating a blue background. So I'm gonna expand our FPS controller up here. We're gonna click on this first person character. And here you can see the skybox is set to blue. So let's click on that and ramp that down so it's black now. So now if we go to game, voila, it is dark. And that's just what we want. Okay, so let's collapse that. Let's go back to assets. And let's go to our Blender files here. And over here we have all of our uh, uh, 3D models here. Now before we drag them into the scene, in order for baked in lighting to work correctly, we need to do a few additional things. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select our object here and we're gonna tell it to generate light map UVs over here in the inspector. So I'm gonna click on that. We're gonna click apply. And then we're gonna do that for all of our objects. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my corridor and I'm gonna drag it into my hierarchy here. It's gonna set it to zero, zero, zero. I'm actually gonna turn off lighting currently. And what you're gonna notice is my textures are all wonky. It's not how I set them up in Unity. Uh, and that's because while we imported our textures into Unity, we now have to apply them as materials. And here's how we do that. So I'm gonna go back to my assets folder and I'm gonna to go to my textures folder. And all I need to do is take my grates. So if you go into materials here, you notice your materials tab is gonna be empty. But if I go into here now and drag the flooring onto our object and now go back to materials, you can see we've made a material for that flooring. So let's drag the walls on the walls. And then let's drag the roof texture on as well. And I'm just gonna drag all of these on just to create all the materials that I need. So now we have materials for all of our objects. So now you can go and you can apply it properly to each surface. I'll so putting the walls on the walls and let's put the roof on the roof. And you can't really see anything there because it is too dark. But uh, we now have all of our prop textures properly applied because we have proper materials now. So let's click back on our corridor and let's get this set up to make it work in our game. First thing we're gonna do is right up here at the top, we're gonna check static next to the name. Uh, we need to set the object to static if it's not gonna be moving and it wants us to do the realistic baked in lighting. Uh, we can't interact with this object anymore so you wouldn't be able to uh, have the player like move it around or anything along those lines. But, um, it's important to check static on all your corridors or any set pieces that are not moving. Uh, next, we're gonna get rid of the animator. We don't really need that animator, so we're gonna remove that component. And we're gonna add a component. We're gonna add a mesh collider. Not a box collider, a mesh collider. Okay, and what that's gonna do is that's just gonna make it so we can walk on our object, uh, which is really important. So if I click play right now, I'm actually in the game, you really can't see anything now. Uh, but rest assured that I'm in there because it is pitch black. So if we turn the lighting back on, you can see what our player is going to see, which is nothing. So let's add our first light. So over here in the hierarchy, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create a light, and I'm going to do an area light. And I'm going to reset its position to zero, zero, zero. And you can see it's casting a little bit of light there, but it's pretty dark. Okay, so let's ramp up that intensity to maybe seven. Let's see how that looks. And you're going to notice down here at the bottom, it's baking our lighting. It takes a bit of time. Let's go into the game now and have a little look. Hey, that looks pretty cool. We're getting some nice, good reflection on this lighting here. It's a little bit low, however. So let's take our light now. Let's go to a place where we can see it and let's raise it up higher in the scene, like there was a light in the roof or something. Go figure. It's gonna bake in that lighting. Let's click play and let's test it out one more time. That looks a lot better. 
Perfect. Okay, good. Let's exit out of that. And now what we're going to do is this corridor is set up. It's working well. Our player is able to run in it. So let's make this a prefab so we can easily drag in more corridors. So we don't have to do all those steps again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my corridor that I've just created and I'm going to drag it down to my prefab folder and make it an original. So now in my prefab folder, I have another corridor, which I can then drag into the uh, hierarchy over there. And then let's rotate the camera. If I hold down control, the control button, as I'm moving the object, it's going to snap. And then we can actually get to snap and line up perfectly with our other piece. Awesome. But it's dark in there as well. So now let's take our area light. Let's duplicate it. And let's move that down the corridor. The lighting's baking down there at the bottom, you can see. All done. Let's play our game and check it out. Oh, that looks good. Spooky. All right, game's coming together nicely, liking that. Let's add another set piece to our scene. Okay, so let's go back to our assets, Blender files, and let's take our intersection now and drag that into the corridor. Okay, uh, it's not looking proper right now, so let's kind of just hold down Control and drag it down to the end and snap it into place. Okay, good. Let's go to our Materials tab. Add the grading on the floor. Let's add our wall textures. And let's add our roof texture. All right, let's remove the animator. We don't need that, it's just wasting space. Add component, mesh collider. Check it as static. Don't forget to check it as static. It's gonna bake in the lighting. It's gonna take a lot longer now because we have a lot more geometry that it needs to check the lighting for. Okay, and now let's take our intersection and drag it down to our prefab folder. So now we have a prefab and then that we can use again. Okay, now it's going to be dark in there. So let's take our area light again. Let's duplicate it and let's drag it down into our scene. Baking in the lighting as per usual. Let's click play and test out our game. Looking pretty good. And now we have a corridor that we can actually put another hallway into. So let's do that now. But as you can see, the lighting looks really nice. It's creating a good atmosphere. So let's turn that off. Let's go back to our prefabs folder. Let's drag in another corridor. Let's move this camera around so I can see it better. Snap it into place there. And now what I can do is I'm going to rotate it on the Y by 90 degrees. And let's snap it in that way. Actually, let's take that one and duplicate that and snap one in over there. And let's take that one. Let's duplicate that and snap that in down there. And you can see now we're kind of starting to build our game. Now actually I'm going to take this area light here, I'm going to duplicate this, I'm going to move it down this tunnel, but I'm going to change this light to more of a red light. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, something's coming up down in this area here. We don't know what's up yet, but uh, uh, whenever you see that red light in video games, you know something is not doing well. All right, and I'm going to take this light, we're going to duplicate it again. We're going to move it down there, we're going to move it down there. Oops. I move it in the wrong axis, move it down there. And uh, let's ramp up the intensity to 10. So it's a lot brighter a light that's being cast. Okay, let's bake this in. It's gonna take a lot longer now because we have tons of lights we're baking in now with lots of surfaces. Uh, before the lesson's over, I'm gonna show you how to turn off auto bake. So you can build the level, you can set up the lights, then click the button, and then it'll bake when you're ready to play it. Uh, but for now, um, we'll leave the, uh, the automatic bake on. Okay. 10 more seconds there. Almost done. And let's go test out our games. We're going to go to play. That looks pretty cool. All right, so there's the transition. Oh, we got that red light down there. That is not looking good. And it's a little bit brighter around the corner. What's up? 
That's pretty cool. All right, so our game's actually coming along really nice now. You can kind of just envision that there's some pickups going on here. Maybe there's something chasing you. We can add some doors. Uh, but let's kind of turn that off now. And I actually created a transfer corridor. I'm not sure how well this works. Let's give this a whirl here. So I can take my transfer corridor and I'm going to drag them to my hierarchy. And uh, let's move our transfer corridor down over here. And let's rotate it. I want to rotate it that way. No, not that way. Yeah, we want to rotate that 180 degrees. Snap it down, and then let's move it down like that. So that's giving us the downward um, momentum there. And then let's go to our materials tab, drop in our grate, drop in our walls. Our roof tile there, roof tile at the top. Let's set that to static. Let's remove the animator. Let's add a mesh collider. It's gonna take this one a while to bake. So I made this tile in Blender. I think I have a video on it, and uh, we're just to go transition from a lower point. Right, so let's actually then uh, let's take this tile here. Let's duplicate that. Oh, not quite in place yet. Oh, not lining up as well as I'd like. There we go. Still not the right height. Bear with me here, that way, and then that way. There we go. All right, so now we got a nice transition corridor. Light maps are baking in. It's gonna take a long time now. But uh, we'll let those bake in. Uh, and by the way, if you wanna turn off the automatic baking, if you go to the lighting tab, you can actually just uncheck auto generate and that way you can build the level you can put everything in and then whenever you want to bake it in you would just click this generate lighting button here and it'll just save you a bit of time if you're wanting to snap in lots of pieces so you could build the whole thing set up the lights click generate lights walk away for a little bit go drink of water come back and uh, then you'd be able to test out the game so let's see if this transition works the first time i put a transition to the game so let's see how it how it looks here oh almost done here we go okay let's test it out Let's go to run here. Oh, that red light looks great. Oh yeah, look at that going down into the abyss. Now it's kind of dark, but that transition just looks fantastic. All right, so we'd want to put a lighting down there at the bottom. Uh, now I also made a few objects. Let's toss one of those in now. So we'll go back to our Blender files. And I just made this cube here. Let's kind of drag that into our scene. A little bit big, actually. Oh, and it's floating. That's not never good for anyone. Let's put it in the scene, kind of like right there. And it's a little bit big, so let's scale it down 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It'll sit on the ground. It is. Let's take our cube. Let's mark it static. Let's add a, let's put a simple box collider on that, a little bit easier. And now we're going to generate the light in there and see how that looks. Oh, is that, is that floating? No, it is floating. Okay, let's put it down on the ground. Silly me. There we go. All right, let's generate the lighting. See where our cube looks there. And just imagine you can make tons of these items. I also made a light cube. So if you drag the light cube in, you could have the light emanating from that. Uh, but there's lots of cool things you can do with your game now, now that we know how to piece and snap it together. Uh, you know, you can make uh, make a bunch of our crates, you can make some barrels, some computer consoles, uh, some uh, light stands. Uh, you can make pipes. Pipes look really cool running across the floor. You can have holes in the floor which lead down to a different level. Uh, you know, whatever you're trying to collect in the game, you're going to want to start 3D modeling all of those. 
Um, but remember, we're working on this for the next couple of months. So uh, I'd love for you to see to have, you know, at least five or six different corridor pieces and maybe 10 uh, assets to put in the game um, and just kind of have fun with it. Good looking cube, looks good, light's hitting it well. Can I jump on it? Oh, I can, box slider works good, right? So a simple way to put in some assets into the game. You know, that could be your pickup right there, collecting these radiation cubes. I don't know why, but you could be. Excellent. Okay, so I think that's our lesson for today. If you have any questions, feel free to find me. Uh, but we will talk to you all later. Bye-bye.